Yes, my pack is frozen. Crunch, crunch. Oh my gosh, I have to put this on me. actually kind of embarrassing. I have a picture of me and my pack on the very first day and then me later on in like Oregon and it's like my first pack was like this big and then it got down to like this. But once you start living out of that like day after day after day you have to unpack it and then you have to repack it and unpack it and repack it. It's like if you have too many items you get annoyed and so in the beginning of trail, you get into towns and you just start you just start throwing things away. I think a good rule of thumb is like, if you haven't used something in between like multiple towns, then you should just get rid of it. Okay, so yeah, this isn't packed with any like food or water, so that's why it is a bit smaller. But uh, this is my pack, it's from Waymark Gear Company. It's 50 liters and it's frameless. It's the most incredible pack. I will probably never use another one ever again, a different brand ever again. The whole pack held up amazing. It's really dirty, but uh, it worked out really well. So I like to strap my sleeping pad out here on the front. This is a Thermarest Z-Lite. It's not inflatable, so it's really easy to like set up and take down. And if we open this up, Velcro and roll top, so it was great when my pack fluctuated in size, I could basically adjust the whole pack however I needed. Usually I'd be wearing these, but these are just a pair of Hoka 1-1, these are Torrance, these are the shoes that I ended in, freshly cleaned. This is how I charged all of my electronics, my phone and my Garmin inReach. It's an Anchor uh, power core, it's almost 21,000 milliamps. So it gave me about five to six iPhone charges and one Garmin in reach charge. So for some of my clothes, my socks that I wore, uh, they're in Gingy toe liners. I loved these. Uh, they helped me not get a lot of blisters, I think. So these are some of my favorite articles of clothing. Then my top was, this is from Arcteryx. It's just a basic long sleeve, lightweight, um, pretty water resistant uh, shirt. I like to hike in pants or shorts. These are just some Patagonia there. You can see my, my sweat stains on them. I've worked hard in these. And then I have some uh, darn tough socks that I slept in when it was cold. I never hiked in these. I actually don't like thick wool socks to hike in. They always give me blisters for some reason, but these are amazing to sleep in. This is my cotton t-shirt. I got it at a thrift store in Palm Springs while I was on trail for three dollars. Um, it's like one of those like luxury items because cotton's not really good for hiking because it absorbs your sweat and then it doesn't dry. Then for some of the trail, I had a windbreaker. This is from Cotopaxi. It is extremely windy on the Pacific Crest Trail, so this helps break up the wind. Um, and it's really lightweight, and I love the colors, hence how I got the name Starburst. <laughs> Then of course my puffy, my very dirty smelly puffy. This is from Mountain Hardware. It's, uh, I think it's like 800 down fill. And this kept me really warm. This is really important to have on the trail. Especially in the desert when it gets below freezing often. So these are some tent stakes. Um, I would just keep them wrapped up with a hair band. Um, and we'll get to my tent in a bit. This was my uh, Sawyer squeeze filter. This is what I used to filter all my water. I carried uh, smart water bottles because the, the nozzle and the mouthpiece of those uh, fits perfectly in with the Sawyer. I'm missing the O-ring on this though, but this was my second one. So I had two the whole trail. You can see it got pretty beat up, but it, it worked. So these are my camp shoes. They are bedrock sandals. They are very heavy duty, as you can see the material. It's um, Vibram, Vibram, people say it multiple ways, but the insoles 
very good traction. This is what you'll find on the bottom of your hiking shoes, but they put it on top of a sandal um, and you can adjust it. And I like to use these when I would do like water crossings or sometimes I just wanted to air my feet out and I would hike in these. What we have here, this is my tent. This is a Z-Pack Solplex. So these are really great and they're really lightweight because this is only 15 ounces. So my battery pack actually is heavier than my tent in my shelter. And how this is set up is I put, you know, nail it down basically with all of the tent stakes. But then how I hold it up is with my trekking poles. So one trekking pole goes on one side and then it creates tension and keeps my shelter up. That's, this is one way to uh, make your pack uh, lighter because you're not carrying, um, you know, tent poles. You know, you don't have any tent poles, you just have your trekking poles, which I already would be carrying anyway. Okay, so these trekking poles are, this brand is um, REI. They, they made it through the whole entire trip. A lot of people snap their trekking poles and have to get new ones. But you know, this, these held up my tent, but I also hiked with them. Like going uphill like people told me that like oh you're gonna snap your trekking poles at least once probably twice probably even more and like these made it through the whole thing they're not the most lightweight trekking poles but I think it actually worked out because they were good for my tent and then this is my sleeping bag um, I like to pack this in the very bottom of my pack because I usually don't need this until I'm going to bed so I would always try to pack uh, my backpack with what is most accessible, like what I need for the whole day. Like my food would always try to go on top, maybe some like hygiene items and um, things like that because I would be constantly grabbing them. So this is good to always have in your bottom of your pack because you really don't need it until the end of the day. And this is an REI Magma 17 degree. I always had my Garmin in reach, just hanging off of uh, one of these straps so I could always access it and look at it while I was hiking. But this was one of my best pieces of gear just for safety and being able to communicate with my family when I want to have service for a week plus days. And if we go over here, this is on my hip belt. It's a pocket that is right in front of me so I had like easy access to grab anything. I would have like my knife and my phone in here or this was my little container for my first aid kit. I just put, you know, a bunch of like my band-aids in here and, you know, scissors, toenail clippers. You want to keep your toenails nice and short so they don't like cut into your skin and tweezers. Uh, so nice little container for that. This was my only kitchen gear aside from my food bag. It's a titanium spork. Um, like I said, I didn't have a stove so this was all I needed for my food. I'd maybe have a lighter and a knife in here along with my headlamp. This is a black diamond. You do a lot of night hiking even if you don't want to, so this always comes in handy. And that's pretty much all of my main pieces of gear. There were some miscellaneous items like body wipes or body glide or you know things like that. Just little things that you have to um, keep on keep up on when you're in towns, but pretty much that's it. All this stuff I have to work with. A lot of bars and oatmeal. I didn't have a stove the whole time, so my meals were pretty pretty bland, but my breakfast really looked like uh, any kind of protein bar. I ate a lot of the bars. I never got sick of them for some reason. Um, and I would usually eat one while I started hiking. You know, that's when you're getting warmed up. And then I would usually eat um, a piece of fruit. I try to pack out as much fresh vegetables and fruit as I could. So maybe with a fresh uh, orange or apple or something, and then maybe another protein bar a few hours later. And then lunch was my biggest meal. I ate most of my calories at lunch. And I always had some sort of like tortilla or bagel or bread. And then I would uh, have some protein, um, like a lot of tuna packets. So those things are really great or like summer sausage, and I would put that you know, like in a tortilla. I always had cheese, I always had avocado, and I would make a wrap. All right, we have our tortilla, and we have our cheese. We have refried beans. We have our fajita mix. It's chicken, different kinds of peppers, and onion, avocado, and then some fresh pico. 
you should eat a lot of uh, like like Starburst or uh, Sour Patch Kids, like some kind of high sugar to kind of get me going again because you just want to like take a nap. I would probably eat another protein bar a few hours later and or a Snickers bar and um, if I did have dinner it was either cold soaking, maybe like mashed potatoes or um, couscous or something or I would just eat another protein bar with uh, peanut butter or something. I didn't hike a lot yesterday because I got vortexed into your wonderful trail magic. I had two grilled cheeses, beers, lots of like chips. I'm feeling dehydrated so I'm forcing myself to eat right now. I'm not hungry at all but um, I had some Dorito chips from the Trail Magic and I was like, okay, that has salt, like sodium in it, you know, which is good to help me retain some water because I'm just feeling like, like I'm getting dehydrated and all of that. Well, this happened. I'm eating Doritos off of the ground. Someone's probably peed right here. But I don't care, there's a stick. I'm just gonna put it in my mouth. I saw some other people making some crazy like food meals. Like one would be like peanut butter and like Nutella with like a whole stick of butter for the fat mixed together, like people would be doing that. Ramen's a really popular food on trail because it's cheap and it's easy. Um, but a ramen bomb is like you make some ramen and then you just throw in it whatever you have, whether it's like mashed potatoes or chips or cheese. You just like put as much food in it as possible and that's a ramen bomb. A lot of people eat those, yeah. Your muscles are going through like a lot while you're hiking and your joints. And so I think a daily multivitamin, like a really good one, is good for everybody. Normally, um, I take a, like a daily probiotic. A good way to get those probiotics is like drinking something like GT's kombucha, just so you're still getting those probiotics. And my body feels really good when I'm consuming those good bacteria. I didn't really plan anything. I just was like, I'm gonna wing all of this. For me, I can't plan that huge hike because it would overwhelm me. To me, I just needed to take it like one step at a time and I only knew about the next town in the previous town, if that makes sense. Like I didn't know what was ahead. People were talking about places that I didn't even understand. Like I was like, what? I don't even know where that is, but it was somewhere on the trail, but I hadn't even thought that far ahead. So that was just my style. So I think it, me not having a stove just kind of went hand in hand. I didn't have to worry about fuel or, you know, buying meals that needed to be cooked. I just like ate, I ate whatever was available. But I still just like made do and not a lot of people like that. So you just have to figure out what would make you feel more comfortable. To me, that would probably stress me out more trying to figure out where I need to send all my boxes to. And that means that if you send a box to some post office, you have to make it there when they're open. A lot of these small towns, they're not open on the weekends or they're only open a few hours every day. So I just didn't want any of that worry of like having to freak out and plan my hike around like resupply boxes. Doing something like this and experiencing this really makes me feel like if for whatever reason, um, I, found, I found out I only had a small amount of time to live or anything like that, I wouldn't be looking back and Feeling, feeling like I wish I did more, or like regretting all of these things. And I think that's what makes all of this so powerful, is that I don't know how I could feel any more alive and connected to the world. And that's why this is so special. It's not something that has been given to me how to work for it and I think that's what makes it even more special I just need to do this forever <laughs> so I don't know I don't know what my life's gonna look like after this but I have to just keep finding things like this whether it's through hiking or something else that makes me feel this way completely full and 
content and satisfied and also just full of life and growth and just beauty.